So the bus owner pulled this out this morning himself, took him about an hour, and uh, if they charged $500 in labor, I don't know what their labor rate was, do you remember what it was? I don't know. I don't know how they could have done that. If he, well, we'll see how quick he gets it back in before we say that, but they said they, they well, when they did it, they said they had problems putting it on. They, they said they had to fight with it. Um, Okay, we're just going to examine the, the flywheel here as he turns it over. Go ahead. I can definitely see some little marks on the corner of the teeth where it's been hitting on there. And didn't you just have the rear main seal fix on this? Mm -hmm. So why would there be oil coming out of the starter? Uh, yeah, there's just there's like shiny little corners on pretty much so all of them. But it, I don't, it's not nothing that would stop the starter from engaging. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the starter that was on there that he just had put on for nine hundred dollars for the parts and five hundred dollars for the installation, and it's twenty four volt starter on a twelve volt bus. Oh, you want to hand me that box for that one there? Nine hundred dollars just for the part. We ordered this one, um, 12 volt starter, 12 tooth, should be the exact same thing. Uh, this was from O'Reilly's, same casting number on it and everything. Um, and this one was 200 and what did I say, 257? 257. $257. There was a $70 core charge on top of that because he's not going to return this brand new $900 starter as a core. He's going to try and get his money back, which he should. Um, maybe they can come back and watch this video and they'll see what the deal was. Um, but this is a 12 volt that's going to go on there and it should work a heck of a lot better. Now, when he picked it up after paying to have the starter put on, uh, he came out, he turned the key and it just went click. And a mechanic came out, barred the engine over a little bit, and then it started. And what did he explain to you? He said there was a problem. He said there's a short in the starting circuit somewhere. So a short in the starting circuit wouldn't affect something mechanically that would make him re bar the engine over to get it to start. So that, that was kind of a BS. Um, but if he said that it was something with a flywheel tooth or something like that, then I could have seen that situation. Who said that about the flywheel tooth? It was another mechanic that I spoke to later about something unrelated. Okay. So we've looked at the flywheel teeth. They don't, I, I'm, we're, Let's get it together here. The only thing we have to do is uh, reclock the cone on this. is not exactly in the right position, but uh, that's real easy to do. And then uh, he'll get the starter on here this morning, and I bet this thing's going to start right up. We had come to the conclusion last night, too, about replacing this filter housing, that this is where we think maybe we're losing prime, because there's a priming lever for it, a pump, a manual pump on the back side. And when you pump that to prime it, it leaks fuel all over the place. And that shouldn't be leaking externally like that. So that's gotta be where it's sucking air. So I'm sure this is a cat specific part. It'll just be, if we can find it and then uh, replace it, shouldn't be too hard to do. I'm not on the clock. I'm just watching you do this job. <laughs> you gonna need help? It's like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs>
Look, look, look. Look at that. Thinking that's the clock just to hear more. These aren't even going into the flange. Yeah, you gotta. No, I mean, there's like a sleeve in here. These are too big. Oh, the bolts are too big? Yeah. Crapola. Okay. Maybe I'll position the, myself so not the, to get hit. Yeah, the bolts didn't fit because there's these little sleeves in there, um, like that. And I just grabbed the air, the chief again, of course, and uh, just in one little hit was able to knock it out. Jack. Okay, let me let the jack down a little. It's too high, I think. Yeah. I think you can get the jack out of here now. That'll be good. You don't, you don't, you don't want there as a safety? Just take it out? Yeah, no, because i got to get under it to... Okay. Put my arm down to get in for it. It's got a clock a little bit. Rotate it to the top. Yep. Clockwise. Push the solenoid up. Up the batteries now, the starter is all installed, and just seconds away from firing this thing up. That turned over a hell of a lot faster. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> That worked on its own. How many more times do I do this to make sure? Uh, about five. was number five. <laughs> okay. Let's just let it sit for a minute. Put 
that was a thing of beauty. <laughs> but something with that relay, I heard it click. Yeah. And then it worked. Did you have to use that or no? Give the starter a rest just because we're. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not burn it up on day one. <laughs> Much improved. <laughs> yes. We got our new hub there, our uh, miter gearbox. Um, awesome. Super excited. This came from Brandon at Cardinal Coach. So this is fatter on the new one than the old one. This is the fan drive here on the old one and this is the new one so it's a little larger diameter bore we can use this the bolt holes almost line up but they are not quite um they're like a half a hole off and it gets worse as it goes but we could clock at 90 degrees it's the same diameter and redrill new holes that'll be fine and the only other issue is that the fan won't fit on there because this raised collar is smaller here than here so we need to remove this raised collar this whole thing is much thicker than this one is so there's plenty of room to remove material or whatever we need to do, but that lip needs to go away. I don't think that's a problem. This is what the problem's gonna be, is that this is tapered. It's a cone, man. and these are larger. And we need to get, there's, there's, there's plenty of meat there to remove it when I held this up to it. Oh, yeah, this is the new one. I'll do it this way, sorry. I guess you can't really see it on the phone how much needs to be removed. Um, but there's plenty of thickness in there to do it. So we would need this opened up more on the inside and it's tapered to be able to slide on to this larger shaft. There you can kind of see down in there how much would have to come off. It's, it's not a lot. It's probably not showing up very well in the video. keyway would need to be enlarged a little bit too. Well, our buddy Jeff came and picked up the new hub and the parts he's going to machine them for us. So he's going to make the the f mount for the fan. He's going to redrill that and get that right and take off that little lip on it. And then the, the yoke uh, attachment there, he's going to take that and increase the taper on it to fit the shaft and enlarge the keyway. So I don't think it's a big deal. He should have it done tomorrow for us. So that's a nice quick turnaround time. So everything's working out, moving forward.